Welcome to SIGCAST, brought to you by SIG Research Institute, illuminating every path. My name is Sukhman Kaur, and I am the associate editor of the Gurugran Sai Project. We've delved into different compositions here at the Gurugran Sai Project, either traditionally or popularly associated with key Sikh life ceremonies, such as the birth and naming ceremony, initiation ceremony, the wedding ceremony, and also Lama so far. Lately, we've been exploring Bani, traditionally associated with death, like Sad, Alaniya Mahalla Paila, and Alaniya Mahalla Tija, each offering their own insights. In the same vein, we are pleased to announce the release of a collection of seven Shabads associated with the Sikh funeral ceremony, also known as Antim Sanskar. These compositions guide us through moments of mourning, contemplation, and ultimately acceptance of the cycle of life and death. I'd like to spend some time on a particular composition that resonated with me, Shabbat 6 in this collection, Ram Kali Mahalla Panjima Pavane Me Pavane Samaya. From the title of this composition, we can tell that it was revealed by Guru Arjun Sahib in Rag Ramkali. So let's take a look at the Rahaul line from the first party where we find the main idea. Our team translates this to, O oh sibling, who has died? Who has died? No one has died. Rather, a wondrous thing has happened. Meet an enlightened being who knows the way of the creator and creation and reflect on it. The departure of the being from this world is merely a play of the creator. Pause. In a gentle yet firm tone, the Guru poses a rhetorical question, challenging our superficial grasp of death. To the Guru, departing from this earthly realm is simply a part of Ikuangar's magnificent cosmic play. The Guru leads us towards a timeless truth, directing us to those genuine insights. And the custodian of these genuine insights, as the Shabbat says, is the Brahmgyani. And a Brahmgyani is an individual with a profound understanding of Brahm. Here, Brahm is synonymous with Ikonkar and literally translates to the Supreme Being. So the Brahmgyani is that who has a profound understanding of Ikonkar. And we also refer to the Brahmgyani in the Grigrantsai project as enlightened beings. So having come to know Ikuangar, they have been graced with the full knowledge of death. Death doesn't elicit fear from them. Death is another part of Ikuangar, and the idea of leaving this material world doesn't scare the Brahmgyani anymore. In the company of enlightened beings, the veil is lifted and the truth is revealed. We may pause here and think, who are the Brahmgyani? Where are they for whom death is no longer fearsome? In the final stanza, the Guru challenges our self-made theory, stating plainly, what you think this is, it is not. With compassion, the Guru exposes the shallowness of our understanding of life and death. Those who grasp this truth are cherished by the Guru, who acknowledges the difficulty of such a realization. But to come to this realization, we first need to identify what we may unlearn. And by reflecting on the origins of our beliefs, our superficial understandings of death, our assumptions about what it means to die or to be dying, we may question, where do these ideas about death and dying stem from? How does embracing the divine command, hukam, alter our views on death and eko and God? How does wisdom dispel our fears, opening us to the truth of eko and God? Of course, for each word in this varni, we have word meanings for you to explore. And Rovanhar is one that I'd like to highlight for all of you, and it appears in the line Agli ki chakabarna pai, Rovanhar pi ut sadai. The team translates this line um, as the one who weeps, having gotten up, will also depart. And Rovanhad, the word, is translated to the one who cries or the one who weeps. In English, the words that come up 
to mind that could possibly have the same definition have an overtly negative connotation, implying that someone lacks emotional resilience or maturity. So when someone is labeled a crybaby, it's often intended to belittle or diminish their feelings, suggesting that their emotional reactions are either unwarranted or are disproportionate to the situation. It's also an incredibly gendered word, reinforcing the idea that it's not acceptable for specific individuals, usually used against men and boys, um, to express vulnerability or sadness. Like, crybaby is very, very much used as an insult. But that's not Ruvarnahad at all. I feel like I can very much relate to the Ruvarnahad, the one who's kind of being asked in this Shabbat, like, why, what do you mourn? You know, what are you crying for? Because when we cry, it's a raw emotion. Maybe we are overwhelmed with grief or sorrow, anguish, sadness, pain. And to weep is to embrace a sense of vulnerability and authenticity. It's one of those raw human emotions. And the more time I spent with this Shabbat, the more I started to get a sense of Ruvarnahad as someone who is in kind of this moment of recognition or acknowledgement, um, the more I could recall these moments of feeling lost or detached um, in grief. Um, and for me, it's almost a metaphor or a symbol for someone who feels disconnected from the divine, from Ikuangar. In the same way that someone weeping or crying may be overwhelmed by emotions and feeling separated from a sense of comfort from a loved one who has just passed, a person enduring disconnect from Ikuangar may also feel adrift, overwhelmed with emotion, overwhelming this feeling of, of discomfort or you know disconnection from this larger thing that we all want to find belonging in. To be in that moment of Rovarnahar, it's recognizing that you are looking for this sense of belonging within the larger cosmic order of Ikuangar. Weeping can be cathartic. It's a release of pent-up emotions for so many and a pathway, hopefully, towards something better. You know, you can cry and then you can choose to kind of just fall in back to the same patterns, the same things that give you temporary comfort, or you could identify that, okay, this is a moment, this is an opportunity for me to respond differently, to choose a different path, to choose different behaviors, or to even choose a different thinking. So by acknowledging that grief and that pain, we also acknowledge that we want to reconnect with Ikuangar. And by then, by, you know, kind of shedding these preconceived notions of death and dying, we can begin our journey towards this wondrous thing that has happened, towards recognizing that this is merely a play by the creator. And in that, we find a deeper understanding of our place within the divine order that Ikuangar has created. For those seeking a deeper understanding, I urge you to dedicate time to exploring the literal and interpretive translations of this collection of seven Shabbats that we're releasing. To scholars, I extend an invitation to dive into the word meanings and explore the footnotes. And if you're new to exploration, start with the commentaries. And for the lovers, let the Barney resonate through your singing. Wahiguruji ka khalsa, wahiguruji ki fateh. Read the translations and commentaries at gurugranthsahib.io. You are listening to Sick Cast, a Sick Research Institute, illuminating every path.